Oh, absolutely. It's critical to their agenda. Uh, they're not here to destroy us. They're here to use us. You certainly, if they're here to use us, you certainly, they would certainly want us to be compliant. Uh, their numbers are small. Our numbers are great. They don't have armies, and they can't use technology flagrantly because then it would appear to their competitors that they were taking the world by force, which they are not allowed to do. I really want to make this point because this is something we cannot see, but is a critical factor in understanding what, what the Allies are telling us. The intervention is a commercial force. It's operating within a region of considerable habitation. It's governed by rules of conduct. It cannot go take a world by force. The only way that it can really intervene is if it appears that the native world welcomes the intervention or is at least compliant with it. Why else would so much time and energy be taken to studying human beings, phys physiology, psychology, sociology? Why this long, gradual process? Some people say, well, they must be peaceful. They just take us. But that shows a real ignorance of life in the greater community. We're still thinking like brutes, because that's what we do. You know, Take it by force. Well. We're finding out even in our own times that taking anything by force is pretty costly and pretty destructive. We're learning that lesson right now, we as Americans. So an advanced race doesn't need to do this to get what it wants. Look at our history. Demonstrate this is, a, this is such a truth of our own time, our own people. We've seen huge empires overtaken by very small groups of people, intervening forces, with incredible success. They didn't do it using advanced technology, and they didn't do it using force, at least not their force. They took advantage of the existing conflicts within those nations or empires. They took advantage of the myth mythologies and the um, trends, if you will, of those existing empires. How could Cortez, with 550 men, overtake the most powerful empire in the Western Hemisphere? He didn't do it with cannons. He didn't storm the Bastille. He was practically given the kingdom because it was viewed as anyone who comes across the sea is com coming from the spirit world. It's a very common for coastal peoples, by the way, Native tribes to believe that the ocean was some kind of um, uh, veil between physical life and the afterworld, and that they, upon death, would pass over the ocean into the after. That is very common amongst many many nations. Certainly, uh, the Aztecs believed in it, or Montezuma believed in it, and his priests. So here, here are the spirit kings coming across from the afterlife. Right? Aren't we doing the same thing now? the enlightened extraterrestrials who in league with the angels are here to you know, rescue us and uplift us and transform us and biologically alter us and everything. Here we are again. Listen, Montezuma could have been squished in about an hour. He can fire all the cannons he wants. It's not a matter of force. It's a matter of persuasion. It's taking advantage of the weakness of the resident population. Also, the Aztec Empire had a lot of enemies. A lot of the peoples under their, um, their rule had been you know, conquered, and so he, he was able to get other tribes to arm and to fight. So, Now, this may be our own creation, just because we have traditionally been involved in tribal conflict. However, how would this serve an intervention? You take the United States, probably the only nation in the world that could really oppose an intervention. Um, in the ways that it needs to be opposed, it gets embroiled in a civil war scenario that, from which it cannot extract itself. It becomes vilified by the rest of the world, and it becomes immensely weakened. But even its own population is divided about it. Now, faith in your own government is even weakened even further, and that's been a product of the intervention as well, because that's how interventions work. You know, you lose faith in the medicine man, you lose faith in the chief, you lose faith in you know, the ancient traditions, and it creates a power vacuum that, that's easily filled by something else. So I'm not a historian or a 
anthropologist, I'm just talking about common sense because the connection is very big. A very small force can overcome a much greater force by taking advantage of the weakness of the larger force. And we're the larger force. So what does this mean for us? What is the positive side of all this? I know I've been throwing embers on your alarm, but on your alarm, but the positive side of this is immense because this is the one thing that can unite humanity. If anything ever will, this could. <laughs>